like yesterday. We've got a lot more today, and we're going to start it off with my good buddy. I remember you from last year, Blake. Blake uh, Johnson, Stanford University. Blake is an adjunct professor in the uh, Department of Management Science and Engineering at Stanford University and a serial entrepreneur at the intersection of finance, supply chain, and analytics. Good to have you back here. Thank you. Thank you and you. I were... Um, chatting off camera a little bit about all kinds of fun stuff. I mean, it's, it's an exciting world now with AI and ML and deep learning. Uh, it's, it's really coming into its own. AI has been around for a long time, but now it's really coming to its own. And it's become part of pop culture in, in, in a sense. <laughs> People right. are talking about Geeks it. Geeks are right. cool. Geeks are cool. <laughs> you find a home. You find trying. a home they're and they're getting closer. Getting closer. <laughs> getting closer. Getting <laughs> closer. You know, actually, I saw uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, maybe a week and a half ago, Jimmy Fallon even talked about AI. Kraft Heinz <laughs> did. Uh, did you see this? Kraft Heinz, he was saying, Kraft Heinz is investing heavily in AI. And he goes, we actually got video of it. And a robot came in, squeezing a ketchup bottle, was going everywhere. That was his sense of AI, artificial <laughs> intelligence. It's coming along, but slowly. Um, favorite part of the conference this year? You've been a part of uh, Partners for a while. You know, I just love to feel the energy, right? Yeah. And see, you know, to your point, where is, where is focus shifting? You know, what are people excited about? What are the new things? You know, when you get enough people that are all interested in that topic in the same place, you can almost just sort of sense, hey, here's the energy, here's where it's going, here's the hot topic. So that's fine, I enjoy that. It is, absolutely. Seeing uh, old friends. Yeah, yeah, we go way back, way back. Well, we're gonna be chatting about uh, automation and the self-driving supply chain. Self-driving means autonomous cars. We're gonna go ahead and check out that correlation a little bit. First question for you though, um, there's a lot of challenges in supply chains, yeah. um, it, but there's also successes. So what, if, uh, what, what makes it an effective supply, uh, supply chain uh, management so hard? It's tough because of really two things. One is complexity. So there's just a lot of moving pieces in the supply chain. There's a lot of people involved. There's a lot of organizations involved. There's a whole bunch of specific materials, parts, you name it. And getting all those things to get pulled together in one place is just really tough. Um, and those are spread. The other piece of that complexity is they're spread across a whole bunch of organizations, a lot of different people, a lot of different companies. So different moving parts, different people. And, uh, and then you layer on that the world in which we live, right? It's an uncertain place. So with that uncertainty, something is going to change somewhere. And then people are going to have to react. And across that complex network of all those people, parts, pieces, trucks, planes, you ripple through change coming from a lot of different directions and it's gonna really lead to challenges. And so what you hear about more than successes is somewhere that broke and it's a really hard problem. I wanna talk about the parallel and we teed it up a little bit ago, but the parallel between self-driving cars and a self-driving supply chain. Yep. What's the similarities? So I picked that analogy for two reasons. One is that, you know, that, that notion of Lots and lots of moving parts. Well, that's the roads, right? I mean, there are all of us out there trying to go where we want to go, and we're trying to navigate, you know, together jointly so that the road system works. And you know, things are continuously changing. Lights are changing color. People are changing lanes. So the supply chain, I think, has a lot of real similarities. And there was also that point that I mentioned in the supply chain, this is all being done by a bunch of individual entities. Well, we're all sitting in our cars trying to get where we want to go. We've got to coexist, coordinate with all those other guys out there doing the same thing. And the last thing is a little bit self-serving, but if you think about kind of this broader theme of AI and you know awareness, two or three years ago, nobody believed that we were going to have self-driving cars in the near term. Can you just put that in perspective. I mean, you're at home, you're like, yeah, I, I remember that. We not only have self-driving cars, but we've got self-driving taxi services. I'm excited about the trucking, trucking business, yes. because there's a lot of accidents that happen around the country. That, to me, is really exciting to have the trucking business uh, continue to stay alive, but also, you know, safer on the highways. That's, that's a big part of the uh, autonomous movement as well when it comes to self-driving. Well, it's funny because I ask people a lot about this self-driving car uh, thing and they bring up what, they kind of think, well, I'm not sure I want a self-driving car. I say, well, do you have a teenager? Like, I want my teenager to have the self-driving car for sure. Right? That's, that's true, yeah. And same thing with trucks, right? Trucks are these giant things that almost ran me off the road a few times or what have you. And we know those guys drive long hours and 
the safety dimensions, and then there's an efficiency dimension, a performance dimension. So if you make it work, you know, and I can be relaxing behind the, you know, doing something in my car rather than paying attention, stressing out and risking my life, that's a huge thing. It is, it is. You relax and, uh, and, and, and work, I'll take a nap. That's what I'm going to do in the, uh, in the self-driving car. I just, that's well, a it's a new entertainment opportunity. They're saying, like, here's this captive audience sitting in their vehicle. They're yes, going to watch something, right. do Good something. Point. Hey, you know, it could, you could be the self-driving car entertainment pioneer. Two years from now, you put it out, and it could come to two years from now, you're going to be in your self-driving car and having to watch me on the way to work. I apologize now. Um, supply chain um, you know, is used analytics. Right. Um, you know, we've got inventory analytics for decades, but what's the difference between the self-driving approach? Yep, so I think that's also a great car analogy, right? So we have been embedding analytics into supply chain for a long time. You know, it was one of the first places to pick up analytics for inventory for all kinds of stuff. What's completely different now is those supply chains are increasingly fully instrumented. In the old days, and these are my you know, legacy faculty members, you know, 1960s were doing the first inventory algorithms. You do your math, you hand it off to somebody, and you, know, you wave goodbye and you never see it again. What happens now is we get continuous feedback. Like, is this working? Where is this working well? Where is this working less well? How do we need to restructure it? How do we need to fine tune it? And along, so basically, how do we raise the bar and really tailor the analytics? But equally importantly, how do we track, well, you know, maybe my analytics was great, but it didn't get executed correctly by the guy on the, you know, ordering department. Or, you know, does the boss really see how that is filtering through into impacting performance? So what we're doing now is we're taking that basic technology and we're really embedding it in a continuously monitored, integrated, executed management, operational management, financial management, performance management. So it's a completely different thing. And the analogy that I found fascinating for cars is, remember, what was it, oh, maybe 15 years ago when um, ABS brakes came along? Yep. So people are like, wow, you know, we're no longer going to skid, we're no longer going to slide, there's going to be a major improvement in safety. So you had to have it, you got better insurance rates, all that kind of stuff. Turns out it didn't do anything. And so what, what my point with this is, is if you drop in a isolated piece of intelligence that has potential, that potential may not be realized until it's part of an integrated whole. We have about uh, a minute remaining. I want to talk about jobs. I think we're going to go over time a little bit because this is an important thing. You, know, you, fo you talk about AI, you have jobs automatically. That, that yep. conversation yep. comes up. How does an organization, um, with a self-driving supply chain, how does it work? Uh, also, how does it affect jobs, yep. uh, current jobs, uh, new ones are being created, one job goes out, one job comes in. That's, it's a big topic. Yep. You know, it's actually one of the things I feel best about. If you go into a supply chain today, there's a lot of people that joined it because they thought the problems were interesting, right? Hey, I'm going to really, you know, plan, execute, deliver value in an important part of the world. And in, instead, what they find themselves doing is firefighting. Or, you know, like something broke somewhere. There was a miscommunication, you know, and so I'm fighting fires. I'm yelling into the phone. I'm sending 20 emails. And it's kind of a mundane, frustrating, it's like sitting in a traffic jam, right? And so what we're saying is we can pick up a lot of those activities and actually allow you to start doing the proactive, intelligent aspect of what you did. Now, there will be things, I mean, we are raising the bar on efficiency, right? So, you know, a company that I work with has 300 people that all they do is change orders placed with their suppliers because something changed. Not an enjoyable job, not an intelligence driven job. So we take some of that, we allow people to do sort of proactive, how do I raise the bar on this whole process? So I think jobs will change, but I think a lot of the jobs that are going to be taken away are really mundane, frustrating jobs in a broken world, like sitting in traffic versus you know, getting where I want to go in my car. It's a great point. We, could, we can talk about this all day long, but I think it's a, something a lot of folks out there uh, are wondering as well and worried about. But again, there's opportunity there. You just have to find it, and you have to go out there and be willing to learn something a little bit new. But again, like I said, it, it, it frees you up. Uh, Blake, always good seeing you. Always Likewise. good chatting with you. Once again, uh, Stanford University, uh, junk professor Blake Johnson. I'll see you throughout the weekend.